Okay. Hi, my name is Luca Neil, and uh, my partner is How Do. You. And our topic of, of our summer research is soft inher inheritance in the hawk and the dove evolutionary game. The game theory has been introduced as one of the approach to estimate human behaviors. And then the evolution game theory introduced and often used in biology. The basic model in the evolutionary game is hog and the dove model. And there has a big assumption in the hog and dove model is the fitness is non-heritable. What does the fitness mean according to Darwin's definition? The fitness is the organism's ability to survive and reproduce. But in the hog and the dove game, the fitness is non-heritable. We think in some of the cases, the Inherit the herit the fitness can be heritable. So what we are doing this summer is to trying to find a method to include the heritable fitness and uh, to test the equilibrium and the stability of the equilibrium analytically and uh, numerically. When I talk about hawk and the dove, I don't mean the two animals or two simple players. We mean the we mean the phenotypes, for example, the different behavior traits or different strategies. For example, the strategy of hog behavior is, is the strategy that they es escalate until they injured or the opponent retreats. So this, this box indicates the expected payoff with two phenotypes. When hog fights with hog, they have 5% of win or lose. So their expected payoff is the fitness value of resource minus the cost of injury divided by two. When the hawks fight with stuff, hawks will absolutely win. So they will obtain the whole fitness value of resource. But however, the dove won't get anything. So the payoff is zero. When the, when the dove fight with doves, they share the resources. They, they don't have any injuries, so their payoff is V over 2. And um, so I, I'm going to talk about how we modify the model and our result. So the old in the old model, the fitnesses of hawk and dove start as W0, which means it's the same after every single generation. And by that, to change it and to make it become heritable, the fitness of the next generations needs to be a function of the fitness of the previous generations. So that's why we change the, um, the fitness of hawk and dove uh, to become a function of uh, the previous one as alpha times the fitness of the previous um, hawk and dove's fitness. And these are the equations that regulate how the model develop uh, the fitness of each phenotype. And this is the function that regulates the, f um, the frequency, i.e. the percentage of hawk in the whole population. And this is also um, it's, it's sort of like a recursive definition uh, of, a very of n degrees, because it will relate all the previous fitnesses value and also um, the previous population frequency of hawk to determine the next uh, population frequency of hawk. And then to, in the old model, to find the equilibrium, we only need this single equations of Pn equals Pn plus 1, which means that to assert the, uh, the frequency of hawk of the nth, at, the, at the nth generation to equal the frequency of hawk at the n plus 1 generation, which means the next generation. But then in, in our new model, sin, since we have three different uh, recursive re relations happening at the same time, they have to change at the same t uh, time together. And so to assert equilibrium, we have to make all of them at uh, to be at equilibrium. And to solve that, anal analy uh, analytically, we find the, the exact solutions of these equilibrium values. And but that is just uh, concerning the equilibrium value. We still want to examine the 
behaviors of the hot frequency and the dove's frequency uh, over, over the very long generations. And we see that the one of the very big difference compared to the old model, because in the old model, the, the frequency, uh, like, um, they approach monotically the equilibrium value. But here, you can see that our new model, it oscillate very, very quickly I in this uh, particular example to, to the equilibrium value. And this equilibrium value is exactly and can be calculated at, at that P star. And here's another example where it, it does not converge to equilibrium. This frequency will keep oscillating and forever and can continue forever. And so uh, after doing all the modifications and calculations and an analysis of, the, of our new model, we arrived and uh, to a conclusion that the, when introduced a when introduced, uh, soft inheritance into uh, assumption into our new model, the, the fitness is, an, is a function of the, like I, like I said before, it is a, a function of the previous generation's uh, fitness. Also, the, the behaviors of Hawks frequency over long generations and the, the equilibria, the stability, depends heavily on the value of alpha and beta. Because our model focus is a theoretical uh, approach to examine the, the changes of the old model when we introduce the alpha and beta. So our alpha and beta are critical in terms of determining the equilibria and the stability of, of our mo of these populations. And um, the behavior of uh, the, these equilibria is really much more complex than the old model. And so but, uh, with, with that, we can really look in, uh, for future research. We can look for many real world applications to uh, where these oscillating oscillatory beha um, behavior can be actually ma manifested in, in practical in practice. Yeah, and um, one another open issues for the future research is to prove the global stability ana analytically for our for the, this new new model. Uh, we can also add more uh, phenotypes, which mean behavior strategy, uh, to to our model and continue to study how alpha and beta affects it, uh, the old models. And we would like to thank um, Ohio Wesleyan University and um, to fund our research uh, from, the from the math department and we'd like to thank Dr. Greg Jackson for a lot of helpful tips and instructions. <laughs>